Welcome to the update. I'm Matt DeGroote. Ex-New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian says there's nothing in a Corruption Commission report which shows she acted against the public interest. The ex-Premier has responded to a scathing Corruption Commission finding that she engaged in corrupt conduct by failing to declare her relationship with former Wagga Wagga MP Dara Maguire. Ms Berejiklian says at the time she worked her hardest in the public interest and nothing in the report demonstrates otherwise. Those fellow Liberal MPs and her former colleagues have spoken out against the findings as well. Senior Liberal Alastair Henskins. Many members of the public will be scratching their head, wondering how someone can be found seriously corrupt in circumstances where it's not alleged that they've made any breach of the criminal law. While former Treasurer Matt Keane says he was as surprised as anybody at the finding. It took ICAC two years and millions of dollars to tell us that Gladys Berejiklian hadn't broken the law and hadn't received any financial benefits. So I was shocked like the rest of the public trying to scratch my head and work out what the hell went on. The federal government is scrapping a billion dollar program to develop new Australian satellites. The scheme was set up by the coalition just before last year's election to gather data for industries like agriculture and defence. But Industry and Science Minister Ed Husey says the space sector still has an important role to play. The space sector uh, has been growing on its own for quite some time. Uh, It has obviously put on a number of jobs in that process, particularly helping in the communications arena uh, in being able to provide equipment that's needed there. A court has heard Ben Robert Smith accepts he should pay legal costs stemming from his defamation loss in the federal court, but there is dispute over how far back he should cover the costs for several nine mastheads, the matter returning to court in September. New figures show Australians are saving an average $286 a month, cutting back on micro-treats such as coffees or lunches out. In response to the cost of living crisis, Rachel Slade from NAB says people are being more considered consumers. They might be keeping the daily takeaway coffee, saving on streaming subscriptions, or maybe they've switched to public transport so they can save up for those concert tickets or a weekend away. Six months after being given their marching orders by the King, Prince Harry and Meghan have finally handed over the keys to Frogmore Cottage. And Pope Francis has focused on the life of Australian Saint Mary MacKillop in his first general audience in Rome since undergoing surgery. Sport and entertainment are next. In cricket, Australia will resume 5 for 339 on day two of the second Ashes Test against England at Lords. Steve Smith, 85, not out, closing in on his 32nd Test century. Australian tennis player Jordan Thompson is out of the Mallorca Tennis Open. He's gone down in three sets to Spanish veteran Feliciano Lopez, while Alex Dimonor has been seeded 15th for Wimbledon in the tournament coming up, Australia's highest-ranked seed. In entertainment news, and superstar Margot Robbie has kicked off the Australian leg of her global press tour for the highly anticipated Barbie movie. The 32-year-old bringing a touch of Barbie land to Bondi, saying every day on set felt like a party. If you love Barbie, you're going to love it. If you hate Barbie, you're going to love it. But if if you just like a good movie, you're also going to love it. And opening arguments are expected this evening in the sexual assault case of Kevin Spacey. The four-week trial in the UK covers 12 charges of sexual assault, indecent assault and causing a person to engage in sexual activity without consent. And that's the latest from the Nova Podcast News team. I'll see you tomorrow morning for another episode of The Update.